for Informatics 2015. And especially welcome to this lovely city of Cairns, which uh, it turns out this is a very appropriate place for us to meet as a, a small but determined band of neuroinformatics pioneers, because Cairns actually has a long history of, of pioneering. And I think this is a history that we can draw some inspiration from. So if you, if you bear with me, I'll, I'll uh, try to outline why I think that is. So initially in this land, then there were some free spirits. The aboriginals were, were roaming around this territory. And then in 1770, Captain James Kirk aboard HM Endeavour um, discovered this place. And they ran aground on the now famous coral reefs. And so effectively, the area was, was discovered and, and named. But the, these early immigrants really found this a tough place to survive. This was, the land was hard. And this is reflected in some of the, the areas near here. Um, they named according to how they were feeling about the place. So there's Cape Tribulation, Weary Bay, but Hope Island. So true to say, this land then was just for the, the, the tough and committed in those early days. And then there was a, a, a peak of publicity when in 1872 gold was discovered in the Palmer River. So this resulted, of course, in a, in a gold rush and hundreds of thousands of fortune hunters coming to this region and it gradually became developed. But the area remained uh, an uninhabitable swamp for a long period, really only inhabited by, by the toughest pioneers, so something we might refer to as having barriers to widespread use. And then there was an investment in infrastructure. So in 1886, they began to build the railway, and this really secured Cairns' future as a city. But this engineering feat was not easy. They had some really st steep inclines to, to navigate, so uh, this building this infrastructure was, was really tough. But the railway allowed access to some rich agricultural lands, which sustained the pioneers after the, the decline of, of gold. Um, but still, what we see is that really this area is only for the what we might call now the early adopters. Um, it still remained fairly low key. But then at some point in time after World War II, there were a critical mass of people arrived as tourism arrived in, in the area and becoming what is now Cairns' major industry within 1984, an international airport opening. And shortly following that, then the world began to recognize the, the value of this area. And in the 1980s, the now famous Barrier Reef and the Daintree Park were named World Heritage Sites. So you might be able to see sort of where I'm going with this by now. Um, I think this can, we can draw some inspiration for the field of neuroinformatics. That probably, you know, in the early days, we had some free-spirited uh, software hackers probably in, in, in the neuroinformatics field, developing a few things here and there. And then at some point, the field was actually named. And in 2005, the INCF was formed. But true to say, probably the, the field in the early days was really only for the, the tough, committed early pioneers. And then maybe at some point in time, we get some widespread publicity. And arguably, this could be where, where we are at now with the emergence of the large-scale brain initiatives, drawing a lot of publicity to neuroscience. And they have a mandate to integrate and share their data. So this is really uh, giving, uh, putting a spotlight on, on neuroinformatics. But we could say, arguably, that this is still, there's still some, some significant barriers to, to widespread use of a lot of the, the neuroinformatics tools. So what they did in Cairns, of course, was invest in infrastructure. And this is something that we've, we've seen in neuroinformatics. There's been uh, many attempts to, to develop uh, large-scale infrastructures. The, the INCF data space is, is one example of a federated um, data sharing platform. But as with the, the railway, I think it's, it's true that a, a lot of these things have been really difficult to, to build and sustain. So maybe we're still at this, this point where we really we're, we're looking at only the, the early adopters. But if, if we can draw the inspiration from Cairns and, and keep going, we see that at some point then a critical mass of people begin to, to use neuroinformatics tools in mainstream neuroscience and then the world recognizes its value. So 
I leave it to you to determine at which point we might be along the, this, this pathway. And for sure, what is needed now, of course, in, in all fields of science is a very pioneering spirit as we attempt to, to navigate what's been termed the, the data deluge, this huge amount of data being generated in scientific fields generally. And in neuroscience, I think we have a, a very particularly difficult problem. Of course, as most of you, you are aware, you know, we have investigation at all of these different scales of neuroscience information. So we have investigators focused at the subcellular level, the cellular, all the way through to tissue, to regional whole brain and beyond into the, the clinical realm. And then if we look at even any one particular scale, we have investigators in different subdomains all collecting different types of data. And even if we drill into any one particular subdomain, we often see a, a very much a lack of standardization of data formats, even within a particular subdomain. And of course, as we all know, it takes a lot more resources to curate and integrate data properly than it does to generate more data. And as scientists, we're often more incentivized to just go out and generate more and more data and keep publishing than we are to put our resources into curating and integrating that data. But what is really needed to ask the, the big questions about the brain, the things that, the questions like, well, what is it that causes Alzheimer's disease? How do we cure Parkinson's disease? Or just what is it that makes you better at face recognition than me? What we need to do then is to be able to integrate that data across all of those scales. And that is really essential if we're ever to get a true understanding of the brain and, and, and ask those big questions. And that's what we're all about in the field of neuroscience and neuroinformatics, of course, and, and, that, and that's why we're here. So what we're trying to do then is, is transform neuroscience into a data-intensive e-science. And this is absolutely essential if we're going to be able to replicate experiments, to be able to visualize and integrate data, to search through those integrated data and share them with one another so that ultimately we can model the brain and produce simulations of it and really understand what is going on in the brain. So even a, a decade ago now, the, the Global Science Forum of the OECD were really quite visionary at that time in, in recognizing the need for a concerted international effort to develop neuroinformatics. And they formed INCF initially with, with eight member countries. This has now grown to 18 members, uh, with our latest member, Malaysia, joining us earlier this year. We currently have the Victoria province of Australia as a member, and we very much look forward to welcoming the whole of Australia as a member from the 1st of January next year. So over the past decade then, INCF has been operating four scientific programs in, in these areas shown. And thanks to the coordinated efforts of, of more than 200 scientists over the, this period, these programs have produced a number of products, tools, services, standards, and, and guidelines, as well as uh, many publications. And from this point in time, the, the programs will now transition into a, slight, a, a new format, which I'll, I'll talk about in a moment. But this is a very particularly special point in time right now, I think, for neuroinformatics. This, uh, is a time where we're seeing increased prominence of, of the field. Certainly now, if you go to the major neuroscience meetings, there, there are a number of talks that refer to, to neuroinformatics. And this is partly because of the drivers shown here. So we have, for example, the, the emergence of the large-scale brain initiatives in the US, Europe, Japan, China, Australia, and elsewhere. And as I said, these have a ma mandate to integrate and share their data. So they're really seeking international coordination of standards so that each country is able to, to coordinate with, with the standards that are developing in other countries. And they're looking for a coordinator of those standards and really looking for help from INCF in doing that. So this is a, a role that INCF has been em embracing in the, the last couple of years and will continue to do. The other major driver is the fact that it's really recognized now that the majority of scientific research is not reproducible. Um, so this is a serious situation and there's a call for change from funders. They, they want to maximize their investment also and encourage data sharing so they're not uh, paying for many times over for different investigators to, to collect um, essentially the, the same data. So they're seeking methods for practical 
and efficient sharing of data. There's also right now very large political and societal demand for treatments for, for brain disease. For example, it's predicted that of all the neurological fields, the cost for the field of, of dementia alone will surpass the cost of the entire field of oncology. And this is a particular concern as we have a very rapidly aging world population right now. And in fact, in 2015, this is the first year that the number of people on the planet aged 60 to 64 has surpassed those aged 20 to 24. So this is a significant turning point in, in time right now. It's also increasingly recognized that the published paper is really insufficient legacy of, of research. So we all know that from the point you collect your data and all the various analysis you do upon it and you get the results, what you actually publish in your paper at the end is a huge abstraction of all the processes that, that you went through. So to truly understand that piece of research, what you need is to be able to access the data, but not only the data, the, the metadata and the, the provenance of the data. So what happened to the data at all, all of those stages? And that's really essential. So as I said, we're at this special point in time with these, these big drivers for the field of neuroinformatics. And, and also for INCF, this is a, a, a significant point in time because we're, we're now at the end of our second phase of operation and about to launch our third phase starting next year. We have recently published a new strategic plan that's uh, copies are available on the, in the INCF booth outside and also from the INCF web portal. And really in our third phase, <coughs> INCF is all about really um, better engaging and integrating with the mainstream neuroscience and leveraging our international network of expertise, community training and funding in support of neuroscience use cases and really adding value to neuroscience. Our governing board have identified the field of dementia as a strategic flagship for our next phase and this is because of the, the sheer impact predicted of this disease. The numbers of people affected are shown here. Global cost already well over 600 billion US dollars a year and really rising rapidly partly due to the, this uh, transition in the, the um, composition of the, of the population in the world everywhere uh, becoming an, an older structure. So this really is of significant concern to our member countries. And next month, the INCF will partner with OECD and have a workshop on promoting data sharing in dementia research. The, the web address is given there. So then I mentioned that our, our programs will be transitioning to a, a new structure in our third phase. And um, this structure really uh, intends to have a much broader engagement of community. We will be operating community-driven special interest groups. Um, so I encourage people from next year to, to engage with those special interest groups, engage with others in, in your community. And what we would expect to do through the operation of these groups, we imagine that, that projects, collaborative projects will emerge. INCF will assist with community expertise and funding matchmaking. And we're also going to be allocating seed funding to proposals that emerge as having strong community support and that are within INCF strategic action areas and that, that uh, really address a real world neuroscience use case. <clears throat> Training and education is of uh, particular importance to INCF in its third phase and what we're seeing now and I think we will see even more so over the next five years is, a, is an emerging demand worldwide for the integration of neuroinformatics in neuroscience education. And this leads to um, really a, a significant need to, to, to train neuroscience education providers in, in neuroinformatics techniques. And what we're aiming to do at INCF is help coordinate a hub of educational resources for in neuroinformatics education. And this really will be very much a community effort to, to build this hub, um, to gather curricula and, and content, integrate existing resources, there's a lot of things already out there, and really encourage new creation. So the idea would be then that somebody could come to this hub and, and download sample curricula, uh, multimedia content to enable them to deliver lectures, 
sample data sets for tutorials and so on. So I'd encourage people to keep watch on the INCF portal, incf.org, for the developments as we move towards the launch of the, the third phase next year, and the portal itself will be relaunched next year also. Um, we have a community mailing list that uh, we encourage dialogue within the community through that, that list. You can also subscribe to our quarterly newsletter. And I would encourage people to look out for the, the INCF YouTube channel, which contains a lot of useful training resources already, such as uh, videos of lectures from our Introduction to Neuroinformatics training course. We'll also be at SFN in Chicago this year in uh, October. The INCF booth will have a number of neuroinformatics demos and also a feature about uh, the Neurodata Without Borders initiative. I'd like to uh, announce that the neuroinformatics Congress next year will take place in, in Reading in the UK. This is uh, just outside of London, a very easy commute from all of the, the uh, major London airports and also a nice commuter hub for many of the very uh, scenic and historic parts of the UK. Uh, a really terrific program is, is starting to form under the, the chairmanship of Alan Evans. So we look forward to seeing you in the UK next year. But returning to, to this year's Congress, if you haven't already found it on the, the Congress website, there's a, a section about abstracts, and there's many different ways that you can view the abstracts from this meeting. A couple of announcements about small changes to what you have in the information you have in your program book. Um, the demos are, are, are not taking place upstairs. They're actually on this level in the Tully rooms, which is just as you come out here, the, the rooms on, on the right. Upstairs on, on level one, there is an open room for, for any of you to use for, for meetings or to uh, meet, meet and do, do hacking, and that's in the Blue Water Room. And at the end of the, the day today, when we have the poster reception, um, the, there will be drinks and canapes available for, for two hours. If you've got any questions during the meeting, all of the, the INCF Secretariat staff are all wearing this, this black T-shirt, so you can look out for them and, and they'll be happy to help you. And of course, we have our booth outside also if, if you have any questions. So at this point, then I'd like to especially thank the, the program committee um, led by, by Catherine. I know you've uh, done a lot of work this year to make this a successful meeting, so thank you very much for that. And also thanks to Gary and the local organizing committee from the Center of Excellence for Integrative Brain Function, which is funded by the Australian Research Council. So thanks to both the, the program and the local organizing committees. So then in the spirit of pioneering, I'd just like to leave you with this quote from Emerson, which says, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and lead a trail. So I wish you a very enjoyable Neuroinformatics 2015.